Roxy using her iPad and hand drawing the amazing sentiments that we now have in our collection. All our designs complement each other so that you can use them again and again to create something new. So make sure you don't miss the Daisy V shows on Hachanda. Good evening. Well, this is my first time that I'll be working with Michelle. Hello, Michelle. Hi. How are you? I am good. And I was wondering, because it's our first time together, whether you could just tell um, me, everybody else out there who might not have met you, a bit about your background and how the company came about. Okay. Well, I've only been going for about 18 months now. Um, I've been crafting really since I was at a really good time. Oh, Michelle, I'm so sorry. We have no mic at the moment. Oh, okay. So we will come back to you. Okay, right. We'll, what we'll do is we'll go. I'm just listen to what's happening. We'll we'll start off with our lovely kit, and then we'll we'll come down to. Are we ready now? Oh, I'm carrying on. I don't know what's going on. Okay, this is um, Captain Stephen Chips the Seagull. Uh, we were just chatting before um, we went live that he's a really cute seagull. Look at his little legs. His little legs, that's so cute. Um, but I was saying that in Brighton, yeah, they are not cute. They are vicious. But anyway, he's a really lovely one. Isn't he gorgeous? And look, they come in these very wrappable boxes, as you can see. Oh, we are able to. Yay! And then we'll come back to Mr. Siegel then. So, yeah, shall we start again? Hello! Uh, hello, <laughs> Michelle. So, can you tell us a bit about yourself and the company? Yes, yes. Um, uh, I've been going for about 18 months now, so it's a fairly new company. Um, I liked, I've loved crafting all my life. All, I've tried all sorts of different things. And uh, trained as a primary school teacher, but the, the love of crafting drove me uh, drove me away yeah and so I ended up working in a stamp company then in publishing right so I worked for quite a few years editing craft magazines oh, amazing and I was finally made redundant about three years ago and thought oh now this is the push I needed to actually do my dream which was was set up my, by myself so uh, for the last sort of 18 months it's been full-on sewing kits <laughs> yeah brilliant and they are so funky and fabulous aren't they so in our kit here with captain stephen chips um can you tell us what we get yes you get all the materials that you need you get the stuffing you get any trims you get his little eyes um the only thing you need to provide yourself is your sewing thread um yeah. so Everything yeah, you need. everything in there. Yeah, so there's, there's the ticking fabric, the linen for his head, the spotty fabric. You've got some nice wool felt to make his little hat there, and and the stuffing too. Lovely. Now, sadly, I can't reach over because I know I'll knock everything over. But it, uh, rest assured, it's all there for you to see. And it comes in a really nice wrappable box. Did you add a little bit of blush to his cheeks? I did, yes. Yeah, yeah I've got kind of rosy cheeks myself, so <laughs> most of my characters get rosy cheeks too. Yeah, it's adorable. <laughs> Look at his legs. Wait, all right, now maybe I better not touch him. But I love little knobbly knees like that. And you can position him, can't you? That's gorgeous. Uh, so it's £22.49 pence for our lovely seagull kit. Item number is 303603. Next then we've got Happy Hens. And he's a really lovely one. Are they easy to do? Those are really easy. That, that's really a, a sort of a beginner's project oh, if somebody good. wants just a nice little simple make. Yep. It's all hand stitching. It's on a lovely sort of quality wool felt so the edges are nice and firm and easy to stitch through. And you know they're, they're quite quick and easy to do as well. Oh that's good. And again do we get everything that we need? You do. You get absolutely everything. Um, you get some stuffing, you get the little sticks that you can oh, put you it into. Stick plant pot or in with a you know, bunch of flowers or something like that. Yeah. Um, the only thing you need to supply is, again, just a little bit of sewing thread. You do get the embroidery threads. Oh, good. Um, so I have embroidered sort of a little bit on his wing and around yep. the edge, and you, you get those in the kit too. Lovely. Uh, 13 99 Item number is 122542. Next, we've got our Spring Blooms Jug. Oh, that's a, how do you make it rigid? Um, I use something called palmet violin, which is what they used to use when you used to have at the top of your curtains a kind of a box oh, around yeah. the top of your curtains. Um, that's, that's called the palmet, and they used to use a, a, like a non-woven stiffener in there. Mm -hmm. But it's great for sewing because you can cut it really easily and it, you can sew straight through it, and yeah. it's, it's really nice. Oh, with. we're having it. Oh, look at this and the lovely little flowers. Are the flowers felt? They are. They're all made of, of uh, wool blend felt as well. Yeah. Amazing. Look at this. Beautiful. 
And of course, with each one, you get full instructions. You do, you yes. do. Yeah, I try and uh, make the instructions as clear as possible. There's full step-by-step -step pictures throughout. Yeah. Um, Full-size templates. So you don't need to go to the copy shop and enlarge anything or mess around. Right. I also provide a separate sheet of templates so you can cut those up mm -hmm. but still in the booklet is a copy of them so if you happen to lose one oh, great. you can always trace it back off out of the, the booklet good stuff 1799 then moving along we've got our birdhouse blossoms do you provide the hoop here yes you get the hoop as well that's good yeah. <laughs> that's um they're quite expensive in themselves so that's uh, yeah, a good absolutely. bonus with that one um again all the fabrics any embroidery threads the little beads that are in there the sequins um, it's quite a bundle of bits and bobs there. Yeah, lovely. And because it's so many little pieces, it saves you having to kind of go out and buy a large piece when yes. really you only need a little tiny bit to finish That's the project. That's good. Shall we have another look at it? Since have a little, there you go. There it is. That's really sweet. <laughs> Thank that, you. That would make a really nice like Mother's Day gift. Yes, yeah. I mean, it's um, a nice sort of... It's, it's easier than it looks. A lot of people have said to me, oh, all that cutting out, that puts me off. Yeah. Actually, what I do is I stack all those little fabrics up on top of each other. Yeah. And you cut through sort of six at once. There you go. And That's all right. It doesn't take any time at all to make all those little flowers and leaves. Good. 1499 is your item number. Oh, look at Bedtime Bunny. <laughs> He's really adorable. What sort of uh, skill level do you have to be for him? He's, um, again... You could probably, a, a com confident beginner, I'd say, right. would be fine with that yeah. one. Um, I have machine sh stitched it. You could sew it by hand. Um, but if you've got, a, say, a new machine for Christmas or something, or, you know, it would be a good sort of starter project to get you, get you lots of little different skills involved. There's a little bit of quilting and a little bit of construction. There's a dart. You know, it's, it's a lot of quite simple versions of a lot of different skills involved with oh, that one. He's so cute, isn't he? And the little flower there. I like um, the contrast of inside his ears. That looks really nice. <gasps> Look at his tail. <laughs> That's really sweet. Really sweet. Right, let's pop you back down there. Uh, 1799 364986. Next, then, we've got the round robin, so nice, a nice, smaller uh, little thing portable to it do. It is, yeah. This one's a really popular little kit. Um, it's great. You could hang it on the Christmas tree. You could just hang mm. it around the house. Yeah. And it's a small enough size to sort of perhaps even take in your bag somewhere yeah. on holiday on the commute. Not that many of us are doing that no, now. No, not really. <laughs> but... Um, you know, it's it's a nice, doable little small project and quite a quick one. Yeah. Lovely. We are half the stock gone. Um, it's thirteen pounds and ninety nine pence. Zero eight six six nine six is the item number. Then moving along, uh, we've got our pinny mouse. Oh, so sweet again, adorable. Um, have a little look, and you, again, you've given him some little rosy cheeks. Oh yeah, well, well this again, there's some cheeks on that. That's so nice. You can so, use just normal blusher um, or um, chalk if you've got sort of art materials. Chalks work really well as well. Oh, he's on a magnet. Yeah, he's got a little magnet. In so if you bottom. drop some pins, you can use him to pick them up. Brilliant. And then in the in the bottom there, if you pull out the little poinsettia flower, pull he's on out. a pin, so just pull him straight up. Yeah. Then you can unroll. And there's a little needle roll in there, so it's oh, felt backed. There's, that's so clever. There you clever. go, and your needles fit oh, them inside. That is such a lovely idea. Oh, right, let me try and put this back safely and not stab myself. There you go. Ah, oh, so shrewd. Um, it is £16.49, and pence, eight eight nine five one zero. So half the stock on there. And then we've got... <laughs> Rudolph's nose. These are great for the tree, aren't they? Yeah, they, they've been a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and stock-wise with these, we are three quarters. Very, very busy. You can stuff some little chocolates in their noses. <laughs> you're, you're lucky to have chocolates, really. I was a bit peckish on the way here. Yeah. <laughs> Other brands available, if you're guessing what that chocolate is. Um, and... We've got everything that we need, the buttons, the eyes, everything. Absolutely everything in there. Unfortunately, you don't get the chocolate, I'm afraid. Oh, you do okay. have to go and get those. Yeah. <laughs> £13.49, 060921. And then we've got the winter blooms, um, the candle. Wow. And you've popped in a little... little yeah, there's um, a little like, battery-powered tea light in the top of there. So you can sort of turn him on, then pull him out yeah. and turn him off when you want to. Or if you need to change the battery, you can get it back out again. That's really nice. That's so lovely. Really pretty.
1799 We do have some patterns, so do check out on the website. Here they are. If you go for, you can go for any two or any six, um, should you wish. Okay, so what patterns have we got? Are they the patterns for everything we've seen? Oh, there's more. There is more. What's that? Is that a lovely little gingerbread house? There is. He's, he's down by me, actually, down here. But you'll be able to have a look at him in a moment. Excellent. We've got gnomes, I can see. Gnome patterns. Some, some of the things are up behind you. There's a, yeah. an angel, uh, a mm -hmm. little sausage dog, various different things. Yeah. They're things that have been on the show before. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's a, an opportunity to catch up if you'd missed them last time. Yeah. Lovely stuff. Well, without further ado, what, which one are you going to? Right, um, we're going to show you the, the little happy hens. Uh -huh. I thought, let's with Christmas coming, um, you might be wanting to sort of look ahead a bit to Easter. Uh -huh. If you wanted to buy a gift for somebody, you might want to kind of you know, have them give them something yeah. that they can make ready for the spring. And this is a really easy little project um, that it would be perfect for a beginner. If someone's okay. never sewn before, this is, this is great for them. Um, so, what we're going to do, we're going to start, as always, we get your nice sheet of templates yep. in, your, in your instructions. And I've just cut out the bird template and cut myself two pieces of the brown felt. I'm going to start by making the stuffed version, just to show you. And so, I've layered the two pieces directly on top of each other. Mm -hmm. And we're going to start, actually, strangely, with the beak. Okay. Seems an odd place to start, but uh, it does make sense in my brain somehow. No, we trust you. <laughs> I'm just going to anchor my thread and give you a little tip of doing this. I've got a knot in the end of this thread. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start quite away from the edge. This is on the inside, and I'm actually needling through the felt. And I'm going to pull that through. It means that that knot is well away from the edge, so I don't get this nasty tail hanging out. It doesn't cause me any trouble. It doesn't get in my way. It's buried right down deep inside my, my make. Okay, so I'm just going to do a couple of little stitches to make sure that's nice and firm. And I'm for this, I'm just using normal sewing thread like you'd use in a sewing machine. It doesn't have to be anything special. Now, this beak's a little sort of slightly wonky diamond shape. Yep. I'm going to fold it in half and I'm going to sort of pinch it over the top of that little brown beak. Yeah. Okay. And then it's actually easier to sort of just needle up through that felt to the point. So down this pointed section. Now we're using a, a whipping stitch or an yeah. over stitch. Yeah. So you go from the one side all the time straight through and it catches those two ends together. Mm -hmm. rearrange it in my hand a bit so we can see it better. So we're sewing that over top of that little brown beak to make it look the right nice Ooh. colour. When we get down to the bottom, we're also going to just tack it along the side a little bit as well yep. so that it's never going to fall off. Okay, so now I'm just going to stitch through there, come out on the yellow. Whenever you applique anything, to another piece of fabric in two different colours. Mm -hmm. Always have your thread matching the piece you're sewing on, the piece that's on the top. Because you can see I'm going in down here in the brown, that stitch is not going to be shown. Mm -hmm. But I have to come out in the yellow, so that stitch will show on the yellow. Right. So hence you always choose, in this case, it would be the yellow thread. Mm -hmm. Mine's not quite yellow, but it's near enough. Um, with stock-wise, mm -hmm. um, for our hen... Oh, Katie, what's the stock update? Third of the stock, thank you. Third okay. of the stock one. So normally I would go and do the back as well, but for speed I'm just going to leave that there now. Let's just get that end away. Yeah, lovely. Okay. Nice and quick. So now we've got these two pieces. Um, they're probably a technical name for this. For on a hen, I don't know what it is. It's its head, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm not as sure. Simple as that, just, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to put one of those on each side, and this time I want to put some more decorative stitching in, and I'm just going to put some stab stitches. Stab yeah. stitches, just normal straight stitches. And because these are going to be decorative stitches, and I want them to be visible, I've used stranded embroidery thread that you get in the kit. It comes in six strands. This is right. normal cross stitch thread. Comes in six strands, you separate two off. And from the back now, I'm going to take some really kind of what looks like overly large stitches. Mm -hmm. Stab stitches, we're just stabbing it through. Straight stitch, stab stitch, you know, it's similar names, but in yeah. this case, it's basically the same thing. Yeah. And you can see, I'm not being neat. I'm not worrying about where they're going. Okay. Just doing it. 
because actually it's quite nice and relaxing sometimes to just think, ah, I'll put one there. Yeah. Oh, well, let's have a stitch here. This is what goes on in my head anyway yeah, when yeah. I'm sewing. <laughs> no, I love a bit of hand sewing. I yeah. adore that. It's quite, um, you know, I've, I feel I've spaced those out a bit, so I'm just going to go back and put one in between. Mm -hmm. Don't be afraid to make these stitches a bit jaunty, a bit big. Yeah. However you like. Let's just get to the other side so at least it looks half done. A couple more I think we need. Mm -hmm. There. So this is quite a nice quick project, isn't it? It is, yeah. You could easily finish definitely one in the evening. You might even, if you're a bit speedy, you can get both of them done in the evening. Sometimes it's nice to yeah. relax and enjoy it. And of course you could embellish it more. You don't have to just do the stitching I've said. You could put some French knots on it. You could, you know, go to town and make little sort of feathery shapes. There we go. So we'll put him back down. Okay. Um, and quick stock update uh, for you about the... Uh, Rudolph nose that's gone limited stock so do be quick if you want it it's 13 pounds and 49 pence 060921 lovely back okay, to you then, so I'm gonna just get that out of the way normally I would be a bit more careful and bring this round a bit but to be fast I'm just gonna do a big old stitch on the back so I can get my thread back into the position that I need to carry on yep a little bit further. So we're going to do, again, a decorative stitch now around the edge. I'm going to do a blanket stitch. I think most people know what a blanket stitch is. Mm -hmm. And I'm going the wrong way for me. I've got to do it this way. That's all right. Make me comfortable. I <laughs> don't know what it is about blanket stitch. I've got to work it one way around. It won't, it won't work the other way in my head. Okay, so we go through and the first stitch on blanket stitch always looks a bit weird, but you sort that out when you get round to the back. So we are going to go through from one side, so we're always bringing the needle in from one side, and loop through. So before you pull it all the way through, you loop through. Now you can see this first stitch, it's gone on a bit of an angle. That's yeah. perfectly normal, that always happens with blanket stitch. Just ignore it, you sort it out when you get round to the other side. Okay. Okay, so, second one. Before I pull that stitch all the way through, I'm just going to chop that off because he's getting in my way a bit. That's the thread from earlier. Okay, so before you pull it all the way through, you're going to put your needle up through. And you can see then, you get a little line going this way, and a little stitch going that way. Yeah. And that is a classic blanket stitch, which I guess was used to edge blankets at some yeah, point. <laughs> that's, why we, that's, that's why we call it that. Yeah, it must be. Can't say I've ever edged a blanket with it, but mm -hmm. never mind. <laughs> okay, keep going. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to go all the way around because it's going to be a bit boring to watch, but I'll do a few more stitches so you get the idea. Yeah. And can you see I'm sewing through all four layers? One, two, three, four. All in one go. I'm also using the positioning of my finger mm -hmm. to position the length of the stitch. Yeah. So my finger's behind and I, I'm rubbing this pin, that uh, needle, along the finger because then I know that the stitch isn't going to suddenly go really deep and I'm going to get a big ugly stitch. Yeah. I have actually seen some people even put little markings on their nail to position the stitches or on their fingers. I, I don't go that mad but... It is useful just to have a little guide on the back. Okay, that'll be enough of that. Cool, okay. And you can see, as you go around, you're going to finish that off. When you get to the end, all you need to do is that little funny, ugly stitch. Yeah. You just catch it in with your very last stitch. Okay. And that brings him up neatly. Right. Okay. Uh, okay, where should we go now? So for this one, this brown hen, we're going to stuff him. So I'm going to stitch all the way around. Mm -hmm. But you do need to remember to leave a little gap for your stick. So leave a little hole and we stick the stick in later but we're going to stitch all the way around. For the... oh I tell you what I didn't do. I didn't put his little wattle. Wattle? Wattle. In. wattle. I wattle? think it's a wattle. It's a wattle. Yeah. What I should have done, which would have been really clever, is remembered I needed to put that in. Oh don't worry. So let's put this head one in now so that it can't be forgotten. So you just position that in there, mm -hmm. and when you sew round, you're going to catch it in. And I really should have been clever enough to remember to put that in. Don't you worry. We you get the idea. You could just with a, a thread, normal sewing thread, not the embroidery thread, just tack him on, and that would be fine. Yeah. Which is what I'd do if you weren't all watching me. No. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, so for this one, he's got some little brads for eyes. These are, well, we call them in this country, we call them paper fasteners. Okay. In America, they're called brads, and, you know, that name has just kind of stuck now. They became sort of more popular with people doing scrapbooking and right. card crafts and things. But they're actually really good little eyes when you're doing just a small, quick project. Oh, that's a good idea, yeah. So I'm going to just mark a random position for his eye. Okay, it helps to have a bit of a large needle. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to go through just the two layers this time. Make a hole where I've marked... Push this little tiny thing through that hole. There it is. And what happens is, I'm going to just move that out of the way for now. You open those tiny little prongs out on the back. So this isn't a safety eye, so it's not it's not really suitable for children. Yeah. But for crafting, it's, it makes quite a nice yeah. little eye. It's the equivalent of sort of sewing a bead on or something. So he's got an eye. Let's put his little wattle back, and he starts looking a bit more like a hen. And the little wings, they're pretty simple. Again, you just blanket stitch all the way round. Just before you finish, you add a little bit of stuffing. And you can add some decorative stitches on the top. Um, on the example you've got over there, I've done a few little lazy daisy stitches. Yeah. And a little bit of chain stitch, just to add some sort of feather effects on there. Okay, what do we need to know now? So this one's quite straightforward. You just sew all the way round. Mm -hmm. You stuff him. You get... You're sticking. He has got a nice little flower, and I'm going to show you how to make the little flower now. Okay. This is the sort of style of flower that he's going to have okay. on there. Oh, cute. And I do like making these little flowers. They both start with the same shape. Yep. It's actually that shape without it being cut at all. And from one of these little flower shapes, I've cut out a V. You see, I'm going to just take, like it's a slice of pizza sort of thing, I've yeah. taken that chunk out. So that's that one. And on the second one, I've cut in, I've cut a little circle, it doesn't matter if you don't get it very neat, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And that's going to be the centre of the flower. So, get some thread, make myself another knot. And what we're going to do is, on this, my knot's disappeared, oh well, let's live without it. On this one with the V, the V pizza slice out of there, yep. we're just going to put those two together. I've got to remember not to put it through as I haven't got a knot. Mm -hmm. And sew up that little V. And all I'm doing is giving a bit of a cup shape yeah. to the flower because, you know, these little flower shapes felt, they can look ever so boring really if they've, they're just flat. Mm. So I like to kind of give them some shape. Okay, I think we've sewn that one up now. I'm just going to do a couple of stitches so my sewing doesn't come straight back undone again. Yep. Okay, so that one has just got a nice cut shape now. Yeah, perfect. This one, I'm going to roll it. So, this is going to be the start of my roll. And I'm going to roll it around that circle that we cut. So it's going to be rolled all around, all around, all around. And you see, you've created a nice little flower centre. So it's pretty easy now, holding on to that roll, you don't yeah. want to let go. Just put a couple of stitches in to hold it. Of course, no knot, it's pulling through a bit, but mm -hmm. there we go. And then that gets positioned in the centre of your little cup. Lovely. Oh, they're adorable. Okay. And they're felt, aren't they? Yeah, it's all made of felt, and I just think that makes a really sweet little it sort is. of rose really shape. Is. Yeah. That um, you know, you, you'll see it feature quite a few times in in my different projects. Yep. Yeah. I think it's sweet. There's a little leaf on there. That's quite easy to make as well. It's two little leaves, mm -hmm. but it, actually, it's made from just one piece of felt. So it's that sort of I don't know, like a long leaf shape, I suppose. We're going to fold it in half that way. And we're going to fold it in that way. Mm -hmm. And you can already see how I've created yeah, two leaves. Yeah, that's cute. So all you need to do again is a few stitches yep. and pop in behind. And then you've created this, which is your little accent flower. Perfect. And I think it's these little things that, yeah. that make the difference to a finished project, isn't it? All the totally. little touches. Yeah. yeah. Lovely. Thank you, Michelle. I'll just do a quick uh, recap okay. then. So here he is. Here, both of them, don't forget, you're making the two of your happy hens. 40% of the stock has gone. You get 
everything that you need, uh, you know, even down to the stick. <laughs> so it's 13 99 Item number is 122542. It comes in a very wrappable box also. And um, yeah, just what a nice little project to hand sew. It's good, isn't it? All righty, do give us a call 01733602000 or go to our website at hachanda.com. Now, Rudolph, he is limited stock. He is now down to single figures. And he's really cute. The only thing you don't get is the chocolate. But you have to source your own. But they've got little lights on their antlers, a bit of holly. That's adorable. You get everything that you, that you need in the box. Uh, 13 99 Item number is 060. Oh, sorry, 13 49 is the price. 060921. Could a beginner make these? Definitely. Yeah. yeah, again, hand stitching. It's probably easier than in some ways than the little hens because you're not doing a blanket stitch. It's just a little yeah. whipping stitch all around the edge. That's good. Now, what's your angel policy? Are we allowed to make to sell? Yeah, yeah definitely. Um, the only thing I ask people not to do is to reproduce the patterns yeah. and claim the work as their own or yeah. you know sell the patterns on so yes if people want to make them and um you know to take them to a little craft fair raise mm -hmm. a bit of money for a school or charity or yeah. something i'm perfectly happy for people to do that oh that's good okay and then we're coming along to our lovely little mouse who sat on the stool spool not stool and this is so nice because it's actually when you roll this out it's a little pin what do you call it little pin not cushion but a uh, needle roll thank you yeah, that's, that's the, the word, word. <laughs> look lovely fabric for his tummy and his little ears you get the eyes look you've got little eyelashes that's adorable and a poinsettia there you go um for our, our um, pinny mouse it's 1649 is your item number and then we've got the robin uh, the round robin, 60% of the robin has gone, and you do get uh, the um, the hoop with it as well. I was just looking. I was just looking. Is the is the fabric patterned underneath? The, you actually make the backing fabric yourself. Oh, all right. So in the kit, you've got lots of little different pieces of sparkly organza and net. Right. And you layer it, you put a backing piece of a net down, yep. you put some bond web, you cut up your little pieces, all the different colours and the sparkly bits and lay them out mm. quite randomly really, okay. you know, anything works. Put another layer of bond web, another layer oh, of, I see. of the, the dotty fabric on the top and then you iron it and you create your own sort of backing fabric. It's quite a fun technique to do. It's something a little bit different as well. <laughs> nice. All right, 1399 uh, Right, I'm going to hand back to you then. OK. Well, I'll just carry on showing you the other hen. Yeah. This is the one that is left open so that you can put some little treats down inside there, whatever it might be. So it's made in the same way. As you can see, I magically remembered to put this piece in. This <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I've um, done my blanket stitch. This time, I haven't gone all the way around the edge. I've gone, I've stopped there, and then I've separated the two pieces off, blanket stitched the one to the back of the coxcomb, yeah. and then blanket stitched the other side. So they become separate areas and therefore you can get something down inside nice. so that's that's the difference i did also remember to sandwich in some ribbon at either end so you can hang him up right. you don't have to put the ribbon in if you don't want to but you know i thought it was a nice idea yeah uh, here's a little wing that's a bit further on as well. You can see I'd started doing some, some little stitching on mm -hmm. there. The wing's got a little bit of stuffing in there. It gives it a bit of uh, dimension. Yeah. And so he'll be sewn onto there. Now he's got a different kind of flower on the bottom of this one. Mm -hmm. He's got a daisy. All right. Okay, so I'm just going to very quickly show you how to make the daisy. You need to cut two of the uh, daisy shapes here. And they're just layered on top of each other. And then there's this spiky bit in the middle. Mm -hmm. Now, this is done using a long strip yeah. of yellow felt. And we're going to fringe it. That basically means we're going to cut lots of little snips in without snipping all the way through. I'm sure you must have done this for something in the past. Mm -hmm. Something at school, maybe. Yeah. So it's worth taking a bit of time over it so that you don't accidentally cut it in two. Yeah. It doesn't actually matter if you do. You can just join it back up. Mm -hmm. So I'm not going to do a bit. Okay, not done the done it all. So yeah, it's just you can imagine it. I'm sure. And then once it's all snipped, you're going to roll it. Okay, so roll it, roll it round. As soon as you get it going, it actually goes a little bit easier. You see on the bottom there, it's making a roll. I 
that's as far as I'd got up to with me snipping. And then you sew sort of across and through, oh, okay. needling Not straight through, through, and that's going to hold all those little rolls together. Okay. And you can see now how that's making that centre. Yeah, brilliant. Looks a little bit, if you did a big one, it would look a bit like um, a dandelion. It would, it? Yeah, yeah, definitely in the dandelion. yellow. Yeah. So that's easy, easy then to anchor into the centre of your flower, and he's going to sit on there. And I do believe he's got some of our little double leaves again as well to, mm -hmm. to finish the decoration off them at the sides. Yeah. Um, perfect. So. Right. What we're going to do is take just a little break. Okay. Okie dokie. We're going to tell you a little bit about Freedom and Flexi Order. If you are channel hopping, you're new to us, but you fancy buying something because it's well worth it. Here's Leone. Have you heard of Achanda Freedom? Did you know that as a Achanda Freedom member, you could be making savings on every order you place? For just £5.97 a month, you will benefit from selected Freedom member discounts and complimentary standard delivery on every order you place. You will also receive our exclusive Achanda Freedom members badge, regular newsletters, giveaways and crafty updates. If you shop with Achanda more than twice a month, then Freedom is for you. Don't forget, your Freedom membership is flexible, so you can pause it if you're going away or you can cancel it at any time. So what are you waiting for? Give us a call or head to the website, quoting item number 888888 and join Hachanda Freedom today. Flexi Order has arrived at Hachanda. What is Flexi Order? When you place an item on FlexiBuy in your basket, you qualify for Flexi Order, which means any other items you add to your basket will also be included in your FlexiBuy payments, so you can spread the cost over multiple monthly payments. After your first payment is made, your entire order will be dispatched. When you add at least £60 worth of any items to your shopping basket, either online or on the phone, you'll qualify for a Flexi Order offer. This means you can spread the cost of your order over equal monthly FlexiBuy payments, offering you the extra flexibility when you shop with us. Flexi Order, making your shopping experience with Achanda easier. Now we're going to have a little look at our bedtime bunny now. Um, uh, he's winged his way over to uh, Michelle, but you can see you get the pattern and you get everything that you need in the kit in, as I keep saying, a very wrappable box. So we're just having a little look at what you get in the kit. You even get the stuffing, absolutely everything. And he's so adorable, isn't he? He's such a good gift. $17.99, item number is 364986. Um, right then, over to you, Michelle. Hello. Um, okay, we're going to have a little look at our bedtime bunny now. He's a cute little mix. He's, he's a little bunny and he also has his little sleeping bag cute. that he can sort of tuck down inside. You can tuck him right down with his arms inside or keep his arms out. There you go. He can get right down in there. Yeah. Okay, so let's have a little look. So he's quite a simple shape. He's just sort of a front and back for his main body he's got some ears and then two separate arms and then there's just the one dart on the top of his face to give him a bit more shape so let's have a little look at the pieces so here's some i've pre-sewn as you can see i've sewn that central dart at the top of his head there you yeah. do that first then you put the front and back together and just sew all the way around the edge catching the ears in at the top mm -hmm. should have perhaps started with the ears really so the ears, we're just going to put the two pieces of fabric right sides together, sew around, and I've already turned these right sides out. And then you can see that it's quite a simple job to sort of fold that ear to create a similar ear to that one. Yep. Okay. The arms, um, I don't know if you, you saw earlier, you probably heard me mention that sometimes when you're sewing sort of smaller pieces like arms, it's actually really difficult to manoeuvre it under, right. the, under the machine because they're so small. So what I like to do is to stitch first and cut out after. Oh, okay. So you can see here I've drawn around my template yeah. to make the two arms and then I've stitched leaving a turning gap. And then it's quite easy to actually cut it out afterwards it means you've got a nice chunky bit of fabric to hold on to and maneuver well. around the machine yeah so that's what the reason why i do it it also means you get a much more accurate shape because it's quite difficult to follow that edge sometimes right. especially if you're cutting out it's a bit wobbly 
this way you can follow a line much more simply and that doesn't actually matter too much if you're cutting out it's a bit wibbly wobbly mm -hmm. and a little tip here this is my turning gap between there and there yeah I'm not going to cut the um, salvage sorry not the salvage this set the seam allowance quite as tight there I'm going to make it a bit wider okay okay doesn't have to be such a sharp cut into there so let's carry on cutting round I don't tend to notch because I find that it does make the shapes a bit more jagged mm -hmm. I just cut a, probably a ooh, eighth of an inch all the way around that's probably quite a generous eighth and with that extra width there at yeah. the, the turning gap and let's try and turn this inside out <laughs> I've also got a habit of leaving my turning gaps a little bit really too small, small. Yeah. <laughs> I always put them bigger on my patterns for other people but for myself I end up with this tiny little hole trying to squash all the fabric through so let's do my best to get this through I'm gonna have to use the scissors which could be a bit dangerous as they've got a sharp point there we go it's moving now I just wanted to show you the point of leaving that longer seam at the turn mm -hmm. okay when you turn this through I'm gonna again be very careful I don't tend to use scissors because I do tend to make a hole if you're not too careful you need to do something called rolling out the hems mm -hmm. so between your finger and thumb you roll this backwards and forwards I showed did show you this quickly earlier and it helps get all of that um, fabric right out to the correct shape yeah now these longer bits you're just going to tuck those in there you go the reason they're left longer is because it's far easier to tuck a bigger piece in mm -hmm. than it is a tiny bit if you'd cut that to that sort of eighth inch they would be hanging out you'd have yeah. bits of fraying edge yeah, but it would be point. a bit of a mess so leave them longer you tuck them in really easily it's a simple job just to stitch that back up a bit of a ladder stitch or again an over stitch would be perfect yeah obviously you want to stuff them first there's a couple that I'd I'd stuffed earlier Cute. little sausages <laughs> right so we're gonna move on to one that's sort of jumped a little bit this one as you can see he's got a slightly different face mm -hmm. I was experimenting with faces really with these yeah this original one I did a pen face which for me is is quite unusual I wouldn't normally you know do a pen face but right. I thought let's give it a try for yeah. people who don't like the stitching okay so this was just a permanent marker pen you can get some very nice fine ones and I've drawn a little triangle you know a line two dots and a couple of lashes cool and it, I think it's nice but yep. I still prefer the my stitch. stitching yeah so this one I thought well it's a sleepy bunny it's a bedtime bunny yeah. let's give him some closed eyes and with this I've used embroidery thread this is just a little back stitch for the two um, eyes here some straight stitches for the lashes and a bit of satin stitch for the nose uh -huh. um, but I think I think I still prefer this it's, it's richer somehow yeah. it's a, a blacker black and yeah. I like that and once again as you see I've got these chalky cheeks I will just show you this is my very sad old box of chalks, which I love mm. an awful lot, but I've dropped on the floor so many times. <laughs> yeah. And in the end of here, I've just got a little, it used to be white. Did so it? That <laughs> used to be white. Pom-pom, a yeah. little white pom-pom. And you just go into the chalk. I always do a little bit on my hand to stop it coming out too dark, because if you suddenly put a great big, big blob, blob of yeah. red, it's going to really spoil it. Yeah. Okay. And then you just, I'm just adding a bit more on here. Okay. And you can use you can use blusher, you can use chalk, and it will fade off. Mm -hmm. You know, it might look a little bit harsh at the moment, but yeah. it, it will kind of dull down. Yeah. Let's move this out of the way. Okay, so I'm going to show you now how to attach these arms, because this is a, a traditional sort of method of attaching arms. I'm going to make sure I've got them the right way up. Okay, we're going to sort of joint it. Years ago, the old sort of stife teddy bears and things, they mm. would have a, a metal pin joint right. to hold these in. Yeah. Which you can still get, mm. but, you know, probably for something you have at home, it's like probably this. not worth yeah. it. So you also need a great big doll needle. So this is a really long needle, yeah. usually pretty hefty eye to thread your threads through. Now, I've left some threads here ready. Now, you, can, you need to use a strong thread, or in my case, I'm using a double thread okay now it's going to look very painful this poor bunny you start by anchoring your thread in the what would be the armpit sort of area or where the arm is going to cover it up so you'd anchor your thread nice and securely there you then pass straight through the top i've got to do it at a funny angle because i've got such a long needle 
the top of that arm and already I've gone through the wrong way which is really clever let's go do it properly there we go see there's a slight shaping to this yeah. arm so you want that kind of paw to come forwards yep. okay so I'm putting the one on there I'm making just a little stitch not anything too big and I'm trying to bring it out almost on the same line mm -hmm. and go back in at the same line and I'm going to go um, horizontally straight through my bunny and try and come out there we go on the seam line yeah then get them the right way round yep sort of centrally there you don't want to go too high you just want to be let me show you my pen you know kind of in the center if that's a circle at the top of there you want to aim for right in the middle and come out on the same on the other side okay right. and now we're going to pull it right through it looks so painful I know, it bunny, does, doesn't doesn't it? It? <laughs> then again a little stitch yeah now you need to kind of open this back up to make sure you are coming out at about the same place the yeah. reason why you're going through in the same area is because you're actually creating a joint right so if I show you on the other one what that means it means his arms can do this oh they can move because oh, all realize. the threads are, are traveling through in the same point and you need to go through the the arms and the body I don't know perhaps I'd probably do it about four times at least just to make sure, sure it's really strong. secure yeah now you also see sometimes I've lost my thread somewhere through there um, you also see sometimes that people will put a button which looks kind of cute yeah so you'd have a button on each side mm, yeah, yeah I've lost my thread so I'm just gonna tighten it up and okay. when you pull it tight you can see how it it gives you more shape mm -hmm. and it keeps those, those arms in and you know you've still got that jointing function yeah mm, look at that that's brilliant okay I'm going to move on to, oh, I can show you this quite easily. You'll notice he's got the same little flowers we've just made. So you know exactly how to do that one already. Mm -hmm. And I've just put it on a little pin. The reason I put it on a pin was actually because I couldn't make up my mind whether I was going to put the, the flower up in his hair yeah. or her hair or there. And my intention was to play around with it until I got the right position mm. and then sew it on. But it's kind of yeah currently lived on the pin for some reason <laughs> <laughs> so anyway back to our, our bunny who's losing his arms rapidly come on little bunny don't lose your arms we don't need this there we go we're going to make him a tail so on the back of here you can see he's got a little yeah pom-pom tail I don't know about you, did you ever do this at school with your circles of cards? Yes, yes. Yeah, and you're wrapping it round and you're wrapping there all week. I've got a much, much better way. Oh. Okay. So we've got our wool. Not seeing this. I'm going to snip off a little length. Yep. And I'm going to put it down through the middle two prongs. Okay. And I'm going to just hold those there. I'm also going to put this and I'm going to go wrap I'm going to be wrapping now so I'm just going to put my thumb on top so I don't lose the end and we're going to wrap mm. and in a very short time you can do what it took you you know probably three quarters of an hour ages, to do yeah. when you were younger okay let's not get my finger caught in it I'm just going to wrap all of this little bit of wool I've got here so that you can see what we're doing okay and when you get to the end you need to find that little piece you had at the back yeah we put through the fronds we bring it up to the front and I wasn't very generous so I've left myself a really short piece <laughs> we're gonna tie it off as tight as we can yeah I'm gonna have to do two to keep it up together perhaps not the tightest and then we can take him off and you can see if we cut through I'm now wishing I tied him slight bit tighter in the middle there but never mind you can see now this must be familiar Amazing. to making a little pom pom. And just snip around those loops, and there you go. You've got a pom pom. Now he's looking a bit bit crazy. Yes, yeah. quite a simple job of giving your pom pom a little haircut. Yeah. So we just go Very round. Very satisfying that it is. You end up with lots of bits everywhere, and usually all down me. <laughs> you can see what what I find is easier to do is you flatten it out. Mm -hmm. And then trim off anything that's sticking out yeah. more than the others. You see, now we've made very, very quickly a little pom pom tail. Cute. So very it's cute. just a case of sewing him in position. And if you wanted to make a bigger pom pom, yeah. you've just got to find yourself a much bigger fork. <laughs> that's it. Brilliant. If you want a really big one, you might have to yeah. go out in the garden yeah. <laughs> and find a garden fork. Lovely. Thank you very much, Michelle. That's okay. Um, so we've got our lovely bunny. 
Um, uh, the, the bedtime bunny. Uh, obviously, he's over at, on Michelle's table there, but you do get absolutely everything that you need in the kit. And he's really sweet, isn't he? This is just 17 364 is your item number. Ah, yes. The, then we've got our round robin. You do get the hoop also and everything that you need in the kit. There's loads of organzas, loads of different materials and threads. It's a really pretty looking... Um, oh, yeah, this has been really um, popular, actually. It's 1399-086-696. And then moving along, we've got our lovely little mouse. And he's got... He's got... Look at this. He's got a little magnet and you can pick up your needles with it. How good is that? And then if you open this up, let me do this. It's a little needle holder. Isn't that clever? Look, I love his um, material. It's really sweet, isn't it? There you go. Yeah. And is this what you're demoing next, is it, Michelle? Yeah, I'm going to show you again. We didn't get to quite finish him off earlier, so we're going to carry on with his little needle roll on the bottom. Lovely. Uh, £16.49. pence. Item number is 889510. Do make sure you check out your baskets. Um, so, yeah, you can call us 01733602000 or check out at um, hachanda.com. Um, what are we doing? Lou, here we go. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> this is everything that you get in the kit. You've got... Um, the stuffing, the pattern, obviously, and all your materials. Do you even get the bobbin, Michelle? You do, yeah. You get your little bobbin as well. Good stuff. Yeah, nice little wooden bobbin, which I'm just searching for here. There he is. Cool. So that's uh, quite an integral part of this one, I yeah, feel. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and not everyone has a little old-fashioned wooden bobbin at home, do they? No, no. <laughs> there we go. Um, so back to you then, Michelle. OK, so I've quickly brushed aside my uh, bunnies and found my little bits to do with the mouse again. Now, just a quick kind of recap of where we were earlier on with our mousy bits. Okay, it's quite a simple little pattern. You've basically got two sides. You create two darts to insert the ears and they go right sides together. We sew that back seam and then we put the front seam in sort of as a gusseted piece. Yeah. So as you can see, you end up with a, a little mouse. You need to pin his ears down to kind of open them up a bit and it makes it a bit cuter and then we're going to add uh, a bead just there cool. for his nose and a couple of beads for his eyes and, and maybe a little bit of blush as well we did go through most of this earlier the next stage would then be to put that magnety base in look everything's got stuck on it all my pins <laughs> are stuck it. on it <laughs> and his tail his tail don't forget his little tail at the back let's mm -hmm. get this one so you can see is how his tail should be there we go you've got a nice cardboard base in there with that magnet in so he stands up really well really easily and he also sits on top of that yeah. wooden spindle really well okay the bit we didn't get a chance to do earlier was the decoration around on the spindle the little needle roll here yeah so what we've got is a piece of felt and also another piece of the nice linen fabric um, which i've ironed a little fold a quarter of an inch hem all mm -hmm. the way around yeah um, I did add a bit of spray starch to this okay um, because it makes it easier it holds the fold nicer and we're just gonna lay those together make sure we've got them about the right size we're gonna decorate this before we sew it together so what I've done is I've just got a couple of holly leaf shapes which we're gonna put onto there like that however you like sort of coming in from one end and you can either sew all the way around the edge if you wanted to you could just sew a single line down the middle you could hand stitch on this one you can see I actually machine stitch sort of just down the middle and a few little lines doesn't really matter how you want to get that on there whichever way you like once that's in position then you can machine stitch all the way around the edge or you can just hand stitch again a whipping stitch going through that little fold and hand stitch it round if that's something you prefer right. so attaching it to the bobbin is really simple because I did <laughs> I did trouble for an awful long time as how I was going to attach this to the right, bobbin yeah, how right. on earth am I going to sew this you? on and I thought well I'll do it like that and I'll sew it through there and actually it was such hard work trying yeah. to get through I thought forget it 
and I got the glue out. Yeah, I would, I would. <laughs> so all you need to do is to put your line of glue along here and then you're going to stick that end on. Yep. That's exactly Other... how I've done it there yeah. and it's not going anywhere. Nice. Other brands available of the glue? Yeah, glue. any any kind of glue works. Um, you know, something, uh, a solvent-based glue, as much as it's got other issues, is actually really good and quick for mm -hmm. crafting. So then you're going to be able to roll that around to create your little needle roll. And we need something to stop it coming open. I thought, well, the best thing to do for a, a pin and needle thing is yep. to have another little pin. Sure. So on the top of this pin, I cut out a couple of little flowers. This is really easy. So we've got just some flower shapes stacked up. A green one. It's, it's supposed to be a poinsettia. Yeah, it looks good to me. So we're just going to layer them up. A little centre in a lime green. Put a stitch or two through them to stop them falling to pieces. And then a little bit of glue. I'll just put that around the top here. Just underneath the top of that knob pin. Yeah. Okay. And then when you put it through, I didn't stitch it, but it'll be fine. Just put it on and then hoik it up around and hold it for a while in your hand. Yeah. Because this is, again, what gives it the shape. Otherwise, they look so dull and flat. Yeah. So let's curl it around. And don't be afraid to actually sort of screw it up a bit. And, okay. You know, you hold it for it. quite a little yeah. while. And then you'll get a nicer looking flower at the end of it. Cool. So when this comes around, mm -hmm. it's quite easy then to use that little pin just to fix him into place. Stab him down through. There you go. And you can see how little mouse sits on the top. Yeah. So you've got somewhere to pick up your pins, store your pins and needles, and if you can bring yourself to stab him with your pins, <laughs> you could use him as a pin cushion as yeah. well. Oh, so. he's just absolutely gorgeous. That's really nice. Thank you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Uh, so here we go. We've got our pinny mouse. Um, obviously, he's over there, or, or she is over there with Michelle. But you've got your full instructions. You can see how um, pretty it is. And uh, everything that you need is in the box. You've got the stuffing. You've even got a little pipe cleaner for the tail. Um, you've got the bobbin. And it's such good price. You've got, dare I, dare I lean over, um, you've got the little eyes, you've got the pin for the poinsettia that we've just seen, all of the stuffing, even the little card down to for the base. Um, so you've got everything there. That is £16.49. pence. Item number is 889510. Okay, then moving along, we have got the round robin. Um, three quarters of the stock has gone, so it's been extremely busy. Um, and again, you get everything that you need, even down to the hoop. You've got some lovely mesh and organza. There's felt in there. Um, there's lovely bits that have been cut for you, a few materials. Uh, that is $13.99. Item number is 086696. Uh, just to let my director know, he's keyed me off. Thank you. I was like, can't hear him. Uh, then we've got our bedtime bunny. Again, bedtime bunny is over with Michelle, but you can see what it's going to look like on the lovely pattern. Um, and, and look, he's in the sleeping bag. Love him. And again, everything that you need, all of your stuffing. There's um, some little piece of yarn there, um, all of the different fabrics, because they're really nice different fabrics actually. 17 364986 Next then we've got the Birdhouse Blossom, um, and this again is in another hoop. This something I love the colours to this. Yeah, I love I love Blossom. It's such so pretty, isn't it? And it's yeah. around for such a short amount of time. It's yeah. nice to kind of capture it somehow. <laughs> Which is a shame, isn't it? But that's beautiful, and you've got the hoop. Again, absolutely everything that you need. It's really beautiful. 14.99-903-084. Then we've got our wonderful spring blooms. So this one, um, it really keeps its rigidity. But how adorable! This is this would be nice on like the kitchen table. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And they're not going to die. No, <laughs> that that's lasts it. <laughs> or the windowsill. That would look really pretty. 17.99-003-450. I'll see if I can fit both in now. We've got our happy hens. Lovely. And you've got, you'll be able to make the two. The one that goes on the stick, and you do even get the stick. And the one that's sort of got some little eggs 
in his body, which is adorable. 13.99.122.542, and then Captain Stephen Chips the Seagull. He's marvellous. I love his little legs. They're absolutely adorable. It's twenty-two pounds and forty-nine pence. Three zero three six zero three. Um, thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do you know when you're next in? I don't actually. No? It's, it's all quiet here this evening. I think everyone's gone home to bed. Bless you. <laughs> so I haven't had a chance to speak to anybody. Well, you have a good evening. <laughs> if you've you. got anything in your basket, please make sure you're checking out. They are absolutely adorable kits, and I know that you will absolutely love making them. <laughs> Next, we've got the Studio Lights One Day Special, followed by Tracy Hay. And then after that, late into the evening, we've got the Black Tag event with... Hi there, I'm Nick from Craftoscope. I've been crafting for as long as I can remember. Uh, it started off making things just for myself, but then friends and family asked for, if they could use them too. It was really important to me to bring something unique to the crafting arena, something that was different and something that people would enjoy using just as much as I do. I really hope you'll come and join me on Hachanda for my shows with Craftoscope. Hello, I'm Sue Trangmar and I started Daisy Chain Designs 20 years ago. Back in the day there were very few quilt patterns in the marketplace and so uh, I started to bring patterns into the UK from America and Australia and along the way I've been lucky enough to work with some fantastic British designers and that is what really the essence of Daisy Chain Designs are. At Daisy Chain Designs, we're passionate about sewing and quilting. We design projects that hopefully will inspire you to pick up your needle and thread and have a go. Uh, we have great fun in designing things from the very start, and then the end product is always very exciting when you actually see it made. So don't miss the Daisy Chain Design shows on Hachanda. Did you know you can watch Hochanda 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, using the Hochanda app on your Amazon Fire Stick for free? Just like your smartphone accesses an app store to add new applications, your Amazon Fire Stick accesses the Amazon App Store to add new applications. By downloading the Hochanda app, you'll be able to access your favourite craft channel on your TV anytime you want to watch. Here's how to do it. Simply turn on your TV and connect your Amazon Fire Stick. If this is your first time using the device, follow the on-screen instructions to connect to the internet and log into your Amazon account. Once set up, you'll need to open the search bar. To do so, simply use your remote circular directional dial to scroll to the search icon and select it. Now, simply type Hochanda into the search bar and this will take you to the Hochanda app. All you need to do now is select download and remember, it's free. Once this is added to your Fire Stick, you can move the app for easy access. Press and hold your home button on any app and then select apps from the menu that appears. Scroll down to the Hochanda app and press the button with the three horizontal lines on your remote and select Move to Front. And that's it. You can now watch, purchase and catch up with your favourite shows 24 hours a day, 7 days a week on your TV whenever you feel crafty. Hi, this is Els from Elizabeth Craft Designs. Elizabeth Craft Designs is a Colorado-based company. It's a family company, so husband, son, daughter all work in the company and then a fantastic team of designers because a company cannot exist without a great team around yourself. 
What we would like to share with you is my passion for crafts. We love all the concepts we have. So we have from cute till classic and beautiful designs. We love our journaling planner line and we're going to bring you our ideas, our passion, and we hope to transfer that passion to you. So please join Elizabeth Craft Designs here at Hochenda. Good evening. Um, really super busy launch. Um, when was it? Six o'clock uh, for our fabulous studio light uh, planner essentials complete collection. I'll put my teeth back in. Um, now with this collection, you've got a choice of either the brown or the blue planner. I do mean that, 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 that's the best worst name for that planner because it's champagne yeah it is. brown there you go it makes so, me laugh so, brown sorry lou i haven't introduced you oh, here's lou well, be <laughs> lovely stuff so have you enjoyed um playing with these dies i am in my element 100 percent, 110 percent. i love this because this is something that i do all the time i've even brought my pad in to show you yeah right because it's okay saying i do it but i do do it and these are the this is my planning for this but i wanted to show you i spend hours right look look at that so i spend hours Fabulous. thinking of how my layouts so rather than do it in that i'm yep. going to do it in this ah good idea you see so uh, yeah I make it really worthwhile uh -huh. a planner but doing it in my Marvellous. Well, I'm going to give you the details if you want to shop ahead and then we can have a really good thorough look here because it's £98.66. and pence. How much saving is that? £19. Now, OK, when you're buying them individually, you're saving an extra £20 on top of that. And if you're a Freedom member, even better, uh, it's £88.97. and pence. Is this a why not deal? It is indeed. All right, and you can spread the cost on Flexi by three ways to make it more affordable of 